What causes us stress? How can we lean into life better? How can we move into the complex space of emotions? How can we respond in very different way as we are used to? I'm going to share with you tools of the ancient science of yoga, proven today by neuroscience and psychology. Tools that you can use straight away so that you can move into life really in another way. My name is Daniele, I am a yoga teacher and coach. And my intention is to let you grasp the beauty of life and let you unveil the true power within. What is stress? Basically, it's an automatic response from our body to balance itself in different life situations. And it always existed. Andrew Huberman, a neuroscientist from Stanford University, put it very simple and it says, it mobilizes our system. So certain organs in our body get active and other deactivate. So for example, your heart rate blows up in certain situation and your digestive organs get into second priority. So stress can be physical or mental. When you're late for a flight, in a difficult relationship, financial problem, parents' expe expectations. If an animal is running behind you like a tiger, but how many times a tiger is running behind you? But a lot of time is mental. I mean, I can be here in my room, in my house, and be very stressed for the things I need to do, I want to do. And this brings our system under stress, even if actually there is no real danger. And this is because our society today, it's putting us really under a lot of stress, even younger generations. And it becomes really difficult to relax. So we need to learn to relax. Because it happens that you are lying down in your bed at night and you're staring at the ceiling because your mind is completely active. You're still there, rushing in all the things you have to do, you haven't accomplished that day, maybe thought about the past or about the future. Even if your body is exhausted, it's tired and you just need to rest, it's really difficult to fall asleep. And even if you sleep in the night, the rest isn't that deep. When I feel so goal-oriented, so in pursuit of something, then I am not aligned anymore with my true self. It's especially true when we speak about social media. We tend to look outward and not more inward. And I would like to make a video about social media detox. How can we live in this world of social medias without removing them at all because it's a nice way to connect, but how can we leave them in a more conscious way? When we are stressed, also the control of our speech is very different. When you are angry, for example, with someone, you start to say things that you don't really want to say, or during an exam. You maybe have all the information within you, but stress causes like a freeze in your system and you don't know what you say, really. This happens in the same way in the beginning when you start to film yourself in a room for YouTube, like now. <laughs> Sometimes it happens that stress is put on us. Everything is in your head, but your system is freeze and nothing, nothing comes out of your mouth. <laughs> we start to get warm or cold, we sweat, our eyes start to dilatate. So, <laughs> Stress isn't always bad. Maybe you have heard about the Wim Hof method or breathing techniques and also about the ice bath. These are all controlled techniques to put the system under stress. And what this does is releasing adrenaline. When we are stressed, we release this hormone and our immune system, for example, gets stronger. How? The tool we are going to use is the breath. Why? Because if we want to control the mind with the mind, it's very difficult. Instead, if we use the body to control the breath, the breath will direct the mind. Put it in a simple way, if I say to you, bring your right arm up, you can do that. But if I say to you, don't think to an elephant, what your mind does is exactly the opposite. It's also why when you say to someone that is stressed, to relax isn't actually working, it does the opposite. So the mind works in a really more complex way. But 
what we can do with this tool of the breath, actually, we can direct the mind where we want. It's a really practical and efficient way. If it seems something for advanced practitioner or superhumans, that's really not the case. This is something anyone can do. And the beauty is that the breath is always with you. You don't have to pay for it. You just have to learn to use it. Because where the breath goes, the mind will follow. By harnessing the breath, you gain control over your mind. So let's see now. The breath has two parts, the inhalation and the exhalation. Then there are also the holding. But now let's concentrate on these two. The inhalation expands your lungs. Your diaphragm, diaphragm comes down and makes space to your lungs to expand. And this, the inhalation gives us energy. All right. When we exhale, the opposite, our lungs contract, our diaphragm goes up and we tend to relax. What we are going to concentrate is the exhalation. For example, if you are lying down in your bed and you can sleep, you can simply exhale for longer than your inhalation. That is a really simple practice. Let's say inhaling four, exhaling eight. Really simple. You can try it immediately. Inhale for four seconds. And now exhale for eight. You can immediately feel a sense of relaxation. If you do this for three, four or five minutes, maybe when you're lying down in your bed at night, that's a wonderful practice to calm down your system. Now let's jump in the last part of this video. Be comfortable in the uncomfortable. Very different with of what I told you right now. This is another kind of technique that increases your heart rate. It's called Bastelka. It's very similar to the Wim Hof method. It hyperventilates your body. And I will not suggest this to anyone suffering from anxiety because it can even provoke a stress attack. But with this technique, you learn to control stress in a safe environment. A great starting point is Bastrika for 10 seconds, so rapidly pumping the belly in and out, then followed by an inner retention, so hold the breath for 10 seconds, then again Bastrika for 10 seconds, and then a final outer retention for 20 seconds. So when you finish the outer retention, that's one breath cycle. You can repeat the cycle about 5-6 times or 5 minutes. This is a great stress controlling technique because it switches quickly between a sympathetic stimulating exercise and a parasympathetic stimulating exercise. This is an example why stress isn't always bad. Because our body in this case releases adrenaline, our immune system gets stronger and we are more prepared to react in different life situations. We cannot change life situation, but we can learn how to respond to them. I've prepared also a longer practice that you can try. You can find it on Patreon. It's a platform with a monthly subscription where I'm building my archive with yoga practices, deeper lectures, cooking recipes, and live sessions with me. It's a wonderful win-win to create a deeper connection and to support my work. So you support me and I support you. And I would like to share with you the story with my father because he is a businessman. He has a lot of work in his head, always with his phone around, even in his bedroom. And he cannot sleep very well because he has a lot of things going on every day. So I share with him this practice. It consists of lying down and using breathing technique to really come to a deeper state of relaxation. And the first time we did it, his eyes, I keep remembering, were completely different. That another light was shining through his eyes and he told me that he wanted to learn this, to keep doing it because it has completely changed uh, the relationship he has with stress. Other little things I use personally are, for example, ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is a root that lowers cortisol. I don't use it all the year, just in the moment where I really need to have more focus, to concentrate more, 
it's a great supplement. But always check with your doctor or with an expert. But another thing that you can do freely is taking a journal, writing down what I'm grateful for, or connecting with people, laughing, dancing, having a good meal and a good conversation. Of course, also movement is something that is well known. It's a great practice. So these are the things I've learned through yoga and that I personally use to move better through life. Because at the end, once you understand that it's already everything within you, you don't need anything else, then you become really powerful. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, and we see in the next video.